Greetings, Bethel Baptist Church Ministries. I have the privilege of interviewing our very own pastor, Antonio Johnson Sr. and First Lady Tara Johnson. We're gonna speak regarding their tenure here over the last 10 years as pastor and First Lady of Bethel Baptist Church Ministries. And maybe we'll get a glimpse into the future as well. Good afternoon, Pastor and First Lady. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Let's start with uh, a couple of easy questions and then we'll roll into the tougher question. Pastor Johnson, what is the hypotenuse mm. of the Pythagorean theory? Yes! Of three? <laughs> the square root of pi <laughs> seems to be the answer to that uh, hypothetical, non mathematical right. equation. Listen, I'm gonna let you get. Come, I'm come back to that. Yes. And I'm gonna start with first lady. The pie. What the <laughs> pie is going on? <laughs> first lady, let's start from the beginning. When your husband of 28 years began his tenure as senior pastor of Bethel Baptist Church, what were your thoughts, your feelings, and prayers for him at that time? Okay, so when he started, we were 18 years into marriage. Um, so my one request was that you never allow the ministry to consume you. And I'm sure you guys have heard that because he shared several times. And so that was my number one thing. And always remember family. We were here and we needed you as much as they did. Pastor, what were your concerns for your family, your friends, and the community? And how did that shape your journey through the years as pastor? Well, growing up here in Bethel Baptist Church, I was privileged to sit under the founder, uh, Reverend Levi Reed. And so I watched how he made sure that this church uh, was essential to the community and how he made sure the community was well taken care of. And so that's one of the things I wanted to make sure that I continued to do. Uh, but I also wanted to make sure that I did not again, put the church before my family. So I wanted to find that balance to where I could be here for my family, uh, be here for the church, and be here for the community. So uh, that kind of just made me realize, you know, how to prioritize things. And not only that, how to delegate and to put uh, great people around you so that uh, you can conserve the community while still making sure you're present for your family. That's a, a word to me all the time. Can you be present? And so uh, I have to stop sometime to say, okay, I got you. And so... Uh, we put things in place to make sure that the community was taken care of. Uh, then we have staff in place to make sure that when I'm not able, the church is still taken care of so that I can take care of my family. Good answer. Pastor, what's some advice you, that you found beneficial? Some advice that you received that you, you really found beneficial during your tenure over these last 10 years? Uh, actually, I just said this the other week, mm -hmm. and uh, I think one of the uh, best pieces of advice I've had, um, Pastor Donald Gray told me one time, to make sure if you have a board meeting, church meeting, whatever it is, and it gets heated, mm -hmm. and things get kind of, you know, uh, hostile, uh, to have somebody ready to preach that next Sunday so that you don't get up in the pulpit, you know, thinking that you're over that. But then emotions get the best of you and you start throwing rocks and stones from the pulpit. Uh, that's not that's not good. So uh, that was that was some great advice. And then also Pastor uh, uh, Wesley Hardy and the late great Pastor uh, Gray, uh, they sat me down and they told me, you know, listen, still clear two things because people are going to accuse you uh, of this as a pastor. So still clear the money and the honeys. And so uh, I've always made that a purpose. Uh, that's why I don't sign any checks at all. Right. Uh, I don't want to be on the news saying no comment. Exactly. Right. exactly. Pastor Johnson, this is your home church of 50 11 years. What was or is your biggest challenge that you had to overcome as the leader of the congregation? Uh, you know, it, it was, it's always challenging to pastor the church that you grew up in. Mm -hmm. um, people still have a tendency to see little Tony and mm -hmm. things of that nature. And uh, Then there is the comfort level that people have with you and 
Some are not able to differentiate between pastor and friend. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, believe it or not, the biggest challenge for me is in those moments of grief, uh, when there's funerals, you're not just burying church members, but these are people who helped raise you, people mm -hmm. who've always been a part of your life. And so it's family to you as well. Right. And so trying to serve a family uh, while at the same time grieving the same as that family has been a big challenge. And so, and this one I'm still working on. Mm -hmm. well, we could all understand that. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Ten years as pastor. If you could go back and tell yourself something from ten years ago, what would it be? Oh, wow. Uh, to not take everything personal. Mm -hmm. And that's from both sides of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, don't allow people applause to make you think you're more than you are. Mm -hmm. And don't allow their negativity or their uh, negative comments to make you feel like you're less than you are. Uh, I've always learned that if you live by the applause of men, you'll die by the criticism. So mm -hmm. that's why I just try not to take everything personal. Um, I tell myself there's going to be betrayal, but you'll bounce back. There's going to be uh, people that leave, but God will send people. Uh, so I would just tell myself to be encouraged through it all and remember uh, that it's God's church right. and not yours. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite moment over the last 10 years? You got it. You got it. Okay. You're on the road. You know, <laughs> I, I guess personally, and again, it's, it's so many things that happen whether it's in church, whether it's in staff meetings, I'm a I'm very funny person. I, I laugh a lot. Uh, so you would think that I could probably pull out some of those moments. Uh, but I won't. I'll, I'll spare you guys because there's some material out there. I'll spare you guys. Uh, but I think the, one of the best moments for me uh, was when my mother and father moved back here to be a part of the ministry and when my sister moved back here to be a part of the ministry, uh, to have family. Uh, as a part of the ministry that you know is going to support you no matter what, right. you at least have their support. And so that's been a favorite moment of ours. Uh, uh, and of course, my mother-in-law is here as well. So that's mm -hmm. that's just icing on the cake for us. So uh, when those moments do come, when people flip-flop on you, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, right. you always have your foundation is there to support you. Pastor, thousands of people, and I mean thousands, have sent in this one particular question. They want to know how did you become a Cowboy fan? And more importantly, they want to know how can they join the bandwagon? Listen, that's a simple answer. You, you can blame Geraldine Blakeney Hammy for that. Uh, at an early age, she bought a book bag that had Dallas Cowboy helmet on it. The little uh, football uniform you used to buy as a kid. I had the Cowboy helmet, the shoulder pads, the jersey, the whole nine. And it's just been uh, Cowboys for life since then. And so uh, it, it, it's, it's in me. Uh, my cousins, we, we just come up as Cowboy fans. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's how it started. Now, as for how you can become a Cowboy fan. Uh, which camera I'm looking at? This one. If you've been a fan of the Redskins and the Eagles and the Giants and the Steelers and uh, the 49ers and all of these uh, wannabe franchises freak. that think they are America's team, the first thing you have to do is confess with your mouth <laughs> that the Cowboys are America's team. The second thing you must do hmm. is make sure that you stand proud and let everybody know that this year, is our year. Oh, yeah. If you do those two things, we can take you on, uh, considering some other background checks, making sure you do no hidden paraphernalia anywhere, things of that nature. Uh, but we got a committee here. You can talk to me. You can talk to Gerald. Oh, uh, you can talk to Yvette. You can talk to Frankie. Uh, you can talk to Tony Franklin. You can talk. It's just so many of us. Uh, and at the end of the day, oh, I forgot this is about church. Even Jesus was found by following the star. So if you want to know Jesus, follow the star. Woo. Next question. Oh, man, that, that was a beautiful answer. <laughs> that was a beautiful answer. Yeah. All right, lastly, pastor and first lady. Lastly, pastor and first lady. 
It's been a great 10 years. And as we are rebounding from the pandemic, where do you envision Bethel in the next 10 years? Sure. All right. Um, since we were on the topic of youth last on my end, definitely getting the youth back involved in church. Again, go by reaching them. However, um, getting them more involved in, you know, activities here at the church, um, children's school. church, Sunday school, Bible study. So just bringing them back in however we need to. Right. And so uh, for me, I think the pandemic did a couple of things. It allowed us to see. Uh, that there is a different audience other than people being in person. And so I think we see our reach uh, going further out um, by way of social media. Uh, so developing a social media team or a live stream team uh, that we can actually have a virtual campus uh, for those who are not in the church. Uh, but also I see us uh, expanding in the community, um, doing what we've always done in the community but at a different level partnering now with more people, uh, making sure that the needs are met, uh, making sure that crisis preach, um, and at the same time making sure uh, our young people can see a great example of uh, you know, what it looks like to have made mistakes, mm -hmm. to bounce back, right. uh, and to know that you don't have to be perfect. And so that's what we want to do in the next 10 years is just preach Christ. Preach Christ. Preach Christ. <laughs> preach. <laughs> we want to preach Christ. Uh, to let this world know that Jesus is still the answer for the world today. Uh, and so down the line, you know, I like to see, you know, us involved in job development. Uh, I like to see us continuing along the lines that, that we're doing with our summer camp, uh, with our before and after school care. Uh, and so I'm excited about what the future has to hold. And I just think that, you know, as we continue to do what God has called us to do, God will continue to send us resources and people uh, to make this job easier and to reach the masses. Mm -hmm. Pastor and First Lady, let me be the first to say on behalf of Bethel Baptist Church Ministries, thank you. John Maxwell says that a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. Thank you, Pastor and First Lady for going above and beyond to fulfill your role as pastor and First Lady of Bethel Baptist Church Ministries. In your spiritual duties, you not only play the role of pastor, but I know you, you also act as a community leader, advisor, advocate, teacher, and friend. And I just want to say thank you for the last 10 years and thank you for the next 20 years to come. 